And we are live. Gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Mecca of Banter podcast. A very, very special episode of the Mecca of Banter podcast. We have so much to dive into today from a dreadful St. Louis City performance, an even worse United States men's national team performance. And hopefully we get to top it all off with some European 2024 predictions uh, with all that being said, my name's Henry Wind. You can find me on Twitter at Henry Wind. I am this week's host. Uh, let's check in with the fellas. Nick Hayflinger, how are we doing? You know, we're hanging in there after a week with all the boys um, getting to watch two awful performances. I thought that was done after the end of the Premier League, but here we are, um, and I'm here to chat about it. I'm also pumped for our guest today. Um, but as always, you can find me on Twitter at Hafey4. Um, been a little quiet lately, but let's let's get it active again. You'll get it right back. Lucas Winkleman, what's going on, brother? Hey, guys. Yeah, it's uh, Winks here. You can find me on Twitter at LCW21. Really good to be back, too. I'm going to echo what Nick said, but uh, had a really great time with you guys this weekend watching some very underwhelming uh, games indeed. But, you know, I think fortunately... After all being together watching those games this weekend, we've got the best of the best uh, joining us today to, to dive into it a little bit deeper. But yeah, good to, good to see you guys as usual. Happy to have you. Andy Hoover, what's going on, man? Uh, happy to be here. Uh, I'm on week two in a row of having to rewatch the game after not being able to see it live. And when you know you're about to watch a 0-0 miserable <laughs> draw fest, uh, yeah, it's not. it doesn't make it easier or any more fun. So... That sucked. The results sucked. Uh, but I'm looking forward to this one a ton. That's for sure. Happy to be here. It's so hard week over week coming on here. And like <laughs> We're just like negative as fuck right now. We need like literally any ounce of Begging. positivity to go Begging on. for it. Um, who knows? Who knows when we'll get it? And last but certainly not least, Connor Sindobri. What's going on, fella? Yeah, you know, speaking of positivity, um, it's, great, it's great to see you fellas. Um, just, have to, just have to bring it to notice that so I was going on day two of blocking and muting the words Ten Hag on my Twitter. Um, <laughs> and I have I have since gone after just chasing John Neves news. Um, so yeah, you know, we're, we're struggling. Um, City again was supposed to be our, supposed to be my outlet from United, but again, maybe do a little complaining tonight. Um, par for the course with me, but it's good to see you fellas. Have we got a nice little guest here? Um, so let's dive in. Now, uh, Connor this weekend did lean over to me and tell me uh, that – his uh, his Frankie De Jong to me is Jao Neves. So yep. we're gonna see yep. how how he's yep. doing at the end of the transfer window in August, uh, because he could either be really really depressed or really really, really happy. We gotta check in on that mental health. Um, and fellas, uh, the specialist of guests, uh, we shout this man out every single week on Twitter. Literally the best St. Louis City analysis uh, that exists on the internet. We have tactics with Michael at Chat City Tactics on Twitter. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Um, give, give, the, give yeah. the listeners a little bit of who you are. Sure, yeah. So um, if you guys don't know me, this is my first time on camera. So, hey, um, now. Yeah, my name is hey. uh, my name's Michael Sinnott, and uh, you probably know me better as uh, Tactics with Michael. Um, yeah, born and raised in Washington, Missouri, just a little bit west of uh, the great thriving metropolitan area of St. Louis that never gets brought up. Uh, doesn't matter where I went to high school. We're not going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, no, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, listen to you guys all the time and I can't wait. Can't wait to break down a nil nil in the MLS. Cause I mean, hey. nothing more enjoying. Oh, I no, love I it. It's money. great. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. We're certainly happy to have you. We're going to dive in here in a second. But fellas, did you know that Father's Day is right around the corner? Um, and if you didn't know, today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Maybe your pops has had a bush since the 70s, and that's fine and all. Uh, our friends over at Manscaped have crafted the total package for his special day. Whether it's for the boys downstairs, his beard, or even the best pair of underwear out there, Manscaped has his bases covered. Head over to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with code MECCA20. That is M-E-C-C-A-2-0. And take him from daddy to zaddy. Trust Manscaped. But just so that final sponsor. line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sponsor and the final line never gets better. It's I will say, really I will say, the Mecca boys put their money where their mouth is. We, we were at the lake, as, as we've mentioned. All of the Mecca boys were wearing the Manscaped boxers at the lake. So we're really out here. You guys see my travel bag as well? Yeah. Hey, 
And you know, nothing no wrong with that. Uh, the unofficial sponsor of this podcast, they have no affiliation to our podcast, but we do want to give a shout out. Uh, Kaye STL, C A L L E S T L, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, they are, um, how would you describe it? Who they're, they're, they're a group that's like out there trying to promote a free to play footy all across the country. There's different chapters all across the nation. Love that. Yeah. And you know, we, we have a pretty big affinity on this podcast for another group called Saturday's football based out of California who, uh, their whole thing is, you know, free to play as well. But Kaya STL opened up a brand new, uh, Firm ground, or excuse me, not firm ground. Um, what do you call it? Like indoor Futsal. court, uh, futsal court, um, court. Yeah, in Dogtown at Franz Park. Uh, it's open twenty four seven. There's lights that can be accessed. Um, it's just an incredible, incredible place. Um, just want to really shout out what they're doing. Uh, my shoulder's still broken as fuck, but as soon as I'm able <laughs> to go and kick around a ball, you'll catch us there uh, most weekends because we're just trying to get touches all throughout the summer. Um, and so want to shout out Kaya STL. They definitely are worth a follow um, and big props to what they're doing. Definitely. The merch they had, too, at this joint at, at uh, France Park, they put on a cool little opening thing uh, for that for that court. The merch blew my face off. Like, I was like, <laughs> can I buy more of this stuff? Like, I was asking around, and I ended up with this hoodie somehow, and I'm geeked about it. I'm super excited. It's a cool brand. Uh, I've, yeah, what they've got going, I think is awesome and like the epitome of who we think we are. So I'm <laughs> supporting them wholeheartedly and eager, eager to see uh, where they're headed with all that. So yeah, big shots. Chris Durkin was there. He was celebrating, yep. uh, the, the opening. Um, and that leads us perfectly into, uh, us not celebrating anything on Saturday, uh, with a zero, zero What do you tie. mean? Another tie, dude? What? That's crazy. Draw no. Draw no. <laughs> we, uh, zero, zero tie against Portland. Um, and this shit's getting old fast, fellas. It's, it's getting old. Um, Michael, I want you to kick us off. What were your thoughts on, you were also on week two of watching this game back on replay, mm-hmm. but, what were your thoughts uh, watching it? Where are you now a couple hours after digesting it? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good way to put it, right? Um, I'm so, like, I'm just kind of frustrated, I think. Mm-hmm. I think that is uh, a pretty good way to encompass how most of this fan base is feeling. I'm feeling frustrated. I don't... We, we started off great last year. Let's, we started off too good last year. I think that's what we should have said. Um, expectations got way too high for what the second season was definitely going to end up being. Um, but yeah, um, they, they were found out at the end of last season and they have not figured it out into this season. I think it's that simple. We just don't look, I feel like we don't even look terrible. And that's the, the bad part for me anyways, is that like my, the eye test is saying, yeah, I think we're fine, but um, we're out of the playoffs in a league that basically everyone makes the playoffs. It's the participation Literally. trophy playoff format of the world. <laughs> and it's it's just not acceptable so to be out of the playoffs after finishing first in the conference last year. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, and, and I mean, quite honestly, like I, I think speaking on behalf of a lot of the group because we were together is when they when they dropped the eleven. We were pretty stoked. Like to see Kojima back in that ten role or what we thought would be a ten role um, was absolutely the right choice of what we thought. We couldn't see a world where there was anyone else coming into that spot. Um, and yeah, like frustrated is a great way to, to to put it because you know not to use your own words in your most recent article, but like did it work? Kind of. Like we didn't let up any goals, so like defensively we were pretty solid. But did it work? No, we didn't score any goals. Like it, it was just this stalemate. It seems to be that's what's going on again and again and again and again. I, I like the point you said that the eye test, that was kind of something that I felt rewatching it today as well, is that like some of the buildup getting balls to the wings and, you know, through low in and, and quick one twos looks really good. Like, like it, it, our conversation outside of everything was like, where do you go from here? Like if you, you know, do you need that obvious extra number 10? You know, the way that you laid it out today, Kojima really didn't operate higher up the field than the other two. Um, I think he ended up only player? having, like, eight passes. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, crazy. Is, yeah. is it another player? Like, where is the link that's missing? Obviously, help may be coming, but, you know, Dobes made the point. Like, maybe Carnell doesn't have a ton of other ideas. Like, 
you, you have to adjust to how you're being played, and we're seeing it week after week. The only team that didn't do it because they knew they weren't going to do it was Messi and Inter Miami. Like they're going to hold on to the ball, and it obviously worked out better for us than than any of the teams that have come yeah. to St. Louis. So it, it feels like he's running low on on genuine creativity. Yeah, I hashtag Parnell like, maybe right. Maybe. <laughs> that's you. I think Parnell maybe. I'm the, that's the first time the hashtag's ever been used. I just looked that up. It's like there we go. <laughs> Well, one of one. That's kind of how it describes it, though, because it's one where you, the, the point you said was like, there's times where you watch and it's like, for a while, even on this podcast, like we continuously saw a draw and we're like, but we saw positive things. All right, maybe they'll take the next fo- the next step forward next week. And I feel like we're at this point now where we keep expecting that step to come and it just hasn't come. And then I think the true frustration is just like, you see the same exact thing on the field. Like it's chances are being created for Klaus in the areas that he needs to, he needs to be receiving the ball. The midfield is kind of wishy-washy, even if different personnel is coming in. And the back four, like, yes, we did keep a shutout. But but at the same time, it's they like... had chances. Berkey had to make some saves. Berkey mm-hmm. always has to make some saves. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. You, we can credit the defense and you can sort of credit the effort. But at the same time, it's that... What's that stupid saying? It's like Insanity's doing the same thing over and over and again, expecting a different result. And that's the frustration because we've consistently not seen any connection between our midfield three. Um, and our, our front three, unless it's sort of a ball over the top in, a, in an area where Joe Klaus doesn't need to be receiving that ball. And so I think that's where the frustration, not just from us, us, you know, six, because we're talking about it now, but have consistently talked about it. But I've sort of seen the fan base more and more on Twitter because we're all, we're all active on Twitter, just talking to people that the frustration is growing. And yes, maybe it would be because the expectations from last year, but at the same time, we didn't really lose a lot. You know, like yeah, we, didn't totally. lose a ton of, we didn't lose a ton of pieces. So... It's actually good that you bring that up because that was something that I was doing at the end of the day today because people have been talking about the depth a lot. Mm-hmm. So I have a draft of a tweet that I'm going to send out at some point this week. It's <laughs> like talking so about insider in Mecca 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 Mecca, Mecca, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little foreshadowing. And it's like I was comparing the positions we lost. You know, we lost two center backs. We lost a left back. We lost two wings. We lost a center forward. And we essentially lost a right back because Nerwinski has been fired into the sun. <laughs> That's basically the outs. And then we gained, you know, we gained a right back, we gained a left back, we gained two center mids. But that's about it. So it was kind of comparing, like, what kind of minutes were you seeing? Like, Derwinski played 72% of minutes last year. Yeah. Totland's played 90% of minutes this year. So that's a replacement. But then you've got, like, Stroud and uh, Jensen, who didn't really play a lot, but they had 69% of the minutes played last year. We have 0% in an incoming wing. Yeah. And it's just like, that just highlights... Like we replaced some, but we haven't replaced enough, and that's kind of the basis why. Like, if you see what I write, I want a DP wide player so desperately bad, mm-hmm. and I want someone that can kind of play centrally if we need it. Because I mean, we all see the things. I think there's a a striker that's probably going to be leaving this club in the summer because yeah. he doesn't play, and he's been shipped out twice for. What do you make of that? Like, do you do you do you think that it's it's just overall a lack of willingness to do it from like the board and from Lutz or like because I mean like we all six of us watch the game so yeah. it's not like we're nobodies but like we we know what the holes are like it's so easy to see the holes and like sure. it, it's hard as a fan I guess to look at the signings we're making and see like this like 19 year old center back CDM kind of, and then like maybe a center forward, but is he a 10? Is he a nine? But he can't be here till July. Like all of these weird things, we're not addressing the issues that you're seeing. So is it like a board thing or is it just like a, I don't know. I don't even know what the opposite would be of that. Yeah. I think it's, there's, I mean, there's three levels to any transfer. You've got the, what does the coach want? What does the front office want? And what is the board Want, what are they signing off on? So you've got to appease all three parties at any given time. And if one of those three parties says no, then you're back to square one. And I think I, I feels like we're seeing that that there is some there's there's not a um, they're not together. There's there's some sort of breaking in the communication between what these people want. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, yeah, we're we're missing pieces. And Toykert is going to come in. And he's definitely going to help replace the Giochini sized hole that yeah. we just flat out didn't replace. Yeah. And, and that, that's, I mean, he just kind of left at the end. Yeah. That wasn't like we were, we were planning for that. So you kind of have to understand that 
okay, that's it's hard to make a transfer happen in 24 hours with agents and clubs and everything that's involved in that. But mm-hmm. yeah, there's there's pieces we're missing clearly, and that's why we're not good at the moment. There was there was two statements I made this weekend that I never thought in my life I'd ever be making, and one of them was that we miss Stroud, and the other was that I want Kojima on the ball more than Lowen at the moment. So like something was off in that game to where. We Something might have been off in what you were drinking. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Dude, that's what I'm saying. I, never, I never thought I'd say that ever hey, again. But like, Stroud's got a game wide. plan. Stroud's got a game plan now, and his game plan is to just whip the ball to Ben Teke, and it's working out just fine for him. Fine I, Ben Teke. Where is he? Yeah, yeah, like, right? Yeah. Christian Ben Teke is six yards, but I think I could whip it in, and that big no. slab head would put it in the back of the net. 100%. Nick, I, <laughs> I see where you're coming As a sub for us, from. though, like, shit. I see never thought I'd be saying that. And that kind of comes back to a little bit of what Michael said is like, we're, we're a Lutz, we're, we're in Lutz, we trust until it's fucking backwards. But, but we're looking at a couple of guys that we're a not seeing. We got a left back that was supposed to be the left back and we were never supposed to be relying on a, a, you know, Colorado Rapids and our kid. He was never supposed to be the solution. But we get, we get this left back. We spend 500k. We you know Lutz is the you know the scout whisperer essentially from everything that I've understood. That's what he does, and I think he's you know earned that title. But where what what went wrong with him? What went wrong with like Thorson? Like you know even maybe even that's the, the disconnect. It's Carnell. Oh, <laughs> but like I, it's just so hard for me to believe that. They just got them wrong, you think? Like it's such an inexact science, I think. Yeah, it's for sure. To, like I mean, we all support various clubs, and like some of them work out, and some are Tongue and Dombele, and they don't work yeah. at all. Even though everyone thinks they're going Ooh, to work, out right everyone's there, like, yeah, "Let's do it." It's right there, and it just I mean, doesn't quite work. Literally, they so quite literally, he doesn't work. Like he doesn't yeah. work at all, <laughs> on or off the ball, until he yeah. wants to. You know, but it's just like it's so hit or miss because you don't know what's going on yeah. in their personal lives when they're signing over and all the stuff that we don't see. Like, how long did the club know about Leuven before we knew about Leuven? You know, yeah. Yeah. like it was totally. all speculation on our end, and he's dealing with a terrible situation, but we don't yeah. know any of that. So it's but, so but, hard. But but I think one of my concerns with this is like, so take the initial roster. So the initial roster, you know, over a year ago. Um, and you look at every addition we've made since then. So you look at like the, the mid-year transfer window, you look at the off season, there haven't been a whole lot of like incomings that have worked out really well. Like Markanich has played a lot of minutes and he came in, you know, at the halfway point of the season or whatever it was. But other than that, you look at some of these other guys and it's like Yeah, Hafey could have been better than John Nelson. Like Yeah, you know, I was Totland's oh been my insane. Word. I was Totland's about been to... awesome. Totland's been great. He's been like Totland's my player the of the season. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Been great. So, so the worry is like perhaps the initial roster construction was like fantastic and they did really well with it. But now as they're adding guys in, like I still don't know why we signed Thor whenever we did because it's not like he played a lot of minutes last year to give us like that end of season push and he continues to play worse minutes this year. Like he's on the field, but I wish he wasn't, um, you know, and then we got rid of some guys in the off season, but I, I don't know, man. I, I think it really, I don't know how much longer of like a leash, I guess I will have as a fan with like the, the whole like in loots we trust kind of mentality. If like we go through this whole transfer window here in about a month and it just doesn't produce results. I don't know. I'm happy you brought up. Oh, you can go, Dobes. Well, well I, I think the, the thing that and I see a lot of this with this fan base is that we are making, like, two groups coming in in July, and I think that's one of those where, and as people should, because I think people are like us and we do see positives, but I also think there's that, that line of, of thinking that people have that he's just going to come in and be the fix. You know, yeah. I, I think that's what fans sort of need to get over is it's a more over, overarching problem than just getting a creative nine or, or signing a winger. And so I think that's, I, I said it again, but my main frustration is the fact of, like, I would rather see Carnell start with a back five from the first minute, like, versus go to it in the 72nd minute when you're trying to hold the game off. Like, I want to see something different. Teams have clearly found this out. And it's not like we don't have players who can be quality on the ball as well to keep possession. Yeah. Like, Lewin's quality. Durkin does give away the occasional pass, but at the same time, he'll work, he'll work his ass off. He can keep the ball. Like, we saw Kojima come in against Inner 
and be probably the best player on the ball in that game for us. So it's like, and then you have Totland, and you have Nielsen who can play the ball in the back. So we have players to play a different way, but it just seems like we haven't had that push or the adjustments we're continuously trying to do the, the pressing. And teams, it's not hard to figure out, like we're saying. We act like we're Carlo Ancelotti in our group message every day. <laughs> but at the same time, we've never coached, but we can also recognize the fact of teams know how to play against us. Let these guys keep the ball. Like, let them not be able to press and make them beat us. And they know that right now we cannot play through them and beat them. I guess that's what's really confusing to me. Um, if if we're able to see that, and Michael, if you're able to see that in your analysis of, like, just give St. Louis the ball, you would think that there would be some more training sessions on what to do with the ball. Like, <laughs> progressions, passing you patterns, think. like, how to find this, like, odd man runner. Like, it just doesn't seem to be a game plan. And then I... I don't even know, like earlier in the season, like we, we made a statement like that there is a world that exists where Sam's a better striker for this club than Klaus is not because we think he's a better player, but because like our game is pump and run and that's more of Sam's game than it is Klaus's game. But like the only time that we look successful in doing that is when Sam's on the field, but all the, all the fans want Klaus to be on the field for 80 minutes. Of, like it's just this whole fucked approach. To like how we do it. And I guess I'm just confused. You know, you said Carnell maybe. I'm like so firm in Carnell out. I made the statement a couple weeks ago, like on our Twitter. I said like hashtag Carnell out after some home game. And I got so much shit on a, on the response. <laughs> Everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, nah, fuck that. He's out. Get him out. You saw my <laughs> response. Yeah. Dude, I'm like, and then he's out. literally a week later, you tweeted again. And people were like, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, it was it's maybe. Something. Yeah. I know, maybe. Week by week, they'll right? come around. Yeah. Michael, Michael, question for you. And this is obviously, you know, you, you dive more into like the analytical piece. And just so we make this, this you know, city discussion not 100% negative, I guess if you were to like, if you were to like grasp on some positive things, because I think there are, there are few, but there are positive things from the city team. I guess like if you're a fan that's reading this sort of the casual, like if in your eyes, I guess what are some of the positives that we may be able to build on? It's a good question. Um, well, I think our, our midfield is immensely better than it was last year, which is crazy because Lubin hasn't played for at least half of the season. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's – I'm not a huge Blom supporter. I, I think he is – he's so good at what he does, which is like one I saw thing. Your, I saw your tweet like, response to somebody oh, today. And he's so bad at so many things. He's so limited, I think is the yeah. right way to put it. And Durkin is limited as well. There's no question about that. But – um, he has an ability to progress the ball that we just didn't have it kind of in that more defensive midfield spot, which is a big positive. Um, and I think the biggest positive that we should take away is the fact that we have a guy that played at VCU who's absolutely tearing up the left side of our attack and every right-sided defense in the MLS. Uh, that's, yeah. because, like, that's my big thing of, like, we didn't replace Stroud. Like, Celio's played 53% more minutes than he had last year. Yeah. Like, he's, he's the guy. He's the yeah. replacement, but we didn't sign anyone. We had a guy that was playing, you know, 400 minutes last year, and now he's probably the first name on the team sheet. Yeah. Mm. That's fair. What do you make of this um, – what do you make of, like, the, the back four? Like, I, I know that, obviously, like, Totland and Marcanish have played the majority of minutes, but last year there seemed to be this, like, ever-rotating center back partnership because of injuries, and once one would come back, another one would go out, and we've seen a couple of different pairings this season – um, what do you make of that? Like, what do you make of our back line at the moment? Well, we're going to see it, probably a new one this weekend, right? Yeah. I can't imagine mm-hmm. Nilsson's going to play. Um, yeah, that looked not good. No. If we need we need one more Swede who has knees. Yeah. Victor because Lindelof. Those two are struggling with the knees. They are. Yeah. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, top, we're not going to argue about Talon, right? He's yeah. a difference maker, which I don't know if that speaks more to how terrible it was last year from the right back position or how good Totland is. It's probably somewhere in between. Like, I don't think Totland is the best right back in the league. Right? There's some pretty good right backs in this league, but he's definitely better than the Nerwinski Watts combination. Um, Nilsson, I, th- I think Nilsson is easily the best center back on this team. Um, I really like what Tim Parker does. I yell Timmy every time he does anything, uh, but he's a bit of a traffic cone if you know how to play with Timmy. You know, like, if you keep the ball on the ground and you keep the ball around Timmy, he's going to 
kind of run around and... Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he kind of just... He runs around, and he's going to be slow to a lot of things, and he's he's got weaknesses because he's in the MLS. And I think that's the part that we have to realize that, like, most of the people that are watching City started watching something else, and this is the MLS. Like, at best case scenario, we're talking 14th best league, 13th best league, somewhere kind of in that ballpark, and everyone's going to have a hole. So we have to be able to play around those holes. And, yeah, so Nilsson for me is is the best. Um, yeah, Parker is probably gone. I yeah. don't think we're going to spend a million dollars yeah. to bring Parker back because we're already not paying him half of that. Yeah. He's 30. <laughs> so yeah, that's good... uh, this next year, Wenzel and the Australian guy that I can never remember his name, Girdwood Reich, I think is what yeah. he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, are they going to be the center back pairing? I don't know. It'd be weird if Talon got hurt. No, we'd oh, be so I, that's something that uh, I can't sleep at night thinking <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, because we watched Waltz. We watched yeah. Watts. Um, yeah. Talk about, yeah, he's uh, defensively. I mean, he's a midfielder, so yeah, moving sure. to right back. I was like, my, in the offseason, I was kind of like, okay, maybe he could be our, like, budget Trent Alexander-Arnold. You know, like, kind of composed, <laughs> be able to, like, kind of play that inverted role, progress the ball a little bit. Um, but no. Nope. He cannot do that <laughs> at all. <laughs> no. Positionally, he can't do it. Yeah, yeah, he just he doesn't have the. I mean, we have a lot of fullbacks who don't have the awareness to have a line or you know guard anyone that's standing on their back shoulder. <laughs> but yeah, um, he can't do it. So there's there's holes. We don't have a backup right back. We don't have a starting left back. I'm okay if thirteen wants to be the backup left back. I'm, mm-hmm. That's fine. For he's, sure, he's cheap. He's domestic ish. Even though I think he plays for the Philippines technically. I think he's something like eligible. That. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, so that's fine. Like, as a backup, he spent, like, $50,000 on the guy. Like, yeah. he was expected to come in and, you know, spell a couple games. Not, we literally take John Nelson in a trebuchet and launch him into the Mississippi, never mm-hmm. see him again. And then we have a Danish guy that can't run more than 20 minutes because he played 45 and looked awful. He looked so like, like me and my level of fitness that? for that. <laughs> I, I, I cannot comprehend a world where, like, he can't adjust to the MLS game. Like... I, I just don't understand it. That's that's kind of like I know you can't simulate game minutes in practice because mm-hmm. the intensity, no matter what, you can't simulate that. But like the how long it takes some guys to get up to speed is a huge question mark for me and like what we're doing on the training pitch, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like how long took Nelson to get ready? Like and then all of a sudden Louvre was like, I'm good to go. Even though you were injured and then didn't play for, like, I'm good to go. But everyone else seems to, like, really, really be slow. We're going to play Nielsen 15 minutes and then 22 minutes and then 31 minutes, you know. But, like, at some point, these guys got to play. Well, and, and there's not uh, – we, we saw situations last year and this year, like with Jose Kojima, where if they need minutes – they're playing City too. Like, is there something in his contract that he can't go down and, and play a couple of minutes with them? That's such a tough thing, I think, for both the front office and for a player to swallow. Like, like basically, we're going to send you to AAA. Yeah. 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 It's tough. You know, like, it's, again, there's, it's not just what we're seeing. It's all, like, the personality and, like, are, how are they adapting? Because he just came in February, you know, like, how is he adapting to living in St. Louis? And I'd be like, hey... You're not playing. Go play with the kids. I think, like, from a fan, we're always like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, get some legs and some minutes under his belt. But man, I would be so pissed if that was me. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, mean, I think like, selfishly, some, that'd be so pissed. At some point, I just want to play the game, bro. Like, I, I just want to oh, be out there. And if I'm, not, if I'm not getting it, like, to be fair, like, Nerwinski played a game a couple weeks ago for City 2 and was horrible. He was so yeah. bad. Like, positionally, he was horrible. Like, he wasn't good. Watts played in the same exact game, and Watts was a baller. He played super well in that game. And so on. And, and yeah, I Winston think, played like, all of our minutes at right back last year. Or right yeah, back. So, nuts, like, isn't it? Like, think about that. I think about it. City, too. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I, I just <sighs> hope that there there's a world where we get to see him do something meaningful. And if not, yeah. that we invest in, in this transfer window. Are there anyone, you know... It, can you, like, armchair expert this transfer winner or maybe this summer? Who who do you think is leaving the club? Or do you see us uh, trying to do deals for any spe- specific guys? 
we, yeah, we so definitely don't is... have the MLS knowledge to be like, oh, we should go get him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was Michael like... Royce and Victor Lindelof. <laughs> Lindelof. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, I actually unmuted Royce because I people have finally realized that how stupid that was. <laughs> oh, God. God. I was so in it. I was so in it a year ago, November. I was oh in my it. God. I was like, I'm just begging, like, please, people. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Like, do I really have to post the fact that he makes almost the exact same amount as the entire team? Okay, yes, I guess I do have to make that point. <laughs> do it. So, and, like, you know, the beaches of the lake are not the beaches of Florida and California. Oh, it's not Grand Bay. Like, <laughs> the COVID epicenter of Missouri and whatever it was, that was. There you go. Yeah. It doesn't even get you to sign that. on the dotted line. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Yeah, we'll give you a we'll give you a lake house for three months when it's like a hundred and five, and you're gonna hate every second of it. But... Have you been to Shady Gales by a chance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I I wanted at some point like, all right, can I come up with like a scouting report, like like a general template that I can look around through various databases and find players that fit the system and. Based on the fact that we have now shopped on six continents, it is so unbelievably hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just trying to, like, okay, yeah, I can find a winger, but there's 974 of them. Yeah. How do I whittle it down into a workable list? It's just been, it's been a disaster. So, as far as incomings, I just, like, I'm going to wait until I hear news, and then I'll do some research. Um, But outgoings-wise, like, I mean, Sam's gone. There's no way Sam is here on Labor Day, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Jackson? I mean, that guy sucked this year. If you yeah, can't touch it, there's no way to live it. Like, that's kind of like our, I think that's our biggest problem is that, like, we had Jackson, and there's no replacement for Jackson because Jackson's still here, but he's not Jackson. Yeah. We were, we were so about so, him coming into this season, too, and then he just, he didn't carry any of the momentum he built yeah. from last year to the national team to, just didn't carry any of that momentum. Because yeah. it's been from the start yeah. of the season, he kind of hasn't mm-hmm. had it. That cupcake camp that he went to in February when it was like, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, he's going to represent the U.S. team. Literally, Which, yeah. Yeah, that's, first of all, that's not how that camp operates. But still, yeah, he's just been, he's been really bad. And I've got a, another, I've got another thing that I'm working on for Jackson, and it's just a comparison of last year's stats to this year's stats. Damn. And one is like a circle, and the other is like a stalactite. Like, there's just no roundedness to his game whatsoever. And it's so apparent. Like, he just, he loses every physical duel. And everyone knows he's going to lose the physical duel. The ref knows he's going to lose the physical duel. So, you're not going to get a whistle when everyone knows you're going to lose it. Yep. 100%. So, it's so frustrating. So, I think he might go... Um, there's a world where you can no. still cash in on him, too. And, like, be like, oh, you know, it's a couple of months that's yeah. not looked great, but... Here's the yeah. body of work. Here's how young he is. Here's what he can yeah. provide you in multiple positions. Like, I think there's value in that. And you know, I you ever see rumors on Twitter that he that he likes to rage a little bit at Ballpark Village? Yeah. Has anyone ever <laughs> seen that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've, house. Seen, I've seen rumors. I've seen rumors that he likes his time out in St. Louis City, but that that doesn't concern me because I also would. I get it. Yeah, he's a lot younger than us too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, if I'm 21, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, no speculation on my part. I try to avoid all that. <laughs> so that's all we're here for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, like, in, in analysis. like, Nowinski's probably going to go. But, like, we that's can ship all these guys to Chicago Fire, right? Because they'll take anyone. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of my, yeah. like, yeah. Chicago yeah. Fire, we can give everyone to Chicago. That's fine. Yeah. They don't know do what that. they're doing over there. So, uh, but, well, fellas, we, yeah. we have Dallas this weekend. Um, it's a must-win game, just like pretty much every game is from here on out. coach. They did, they and around. also they're they're quote unquote worse than us. Uh, they're lower on the table than we are. Uh, we'll see how we bounce back. I'm hoping to see something good, not overly high on that thought. Um, but let's move from from one frustration to I don't even think frustration really even uh, eclipses what was felt in a five one loss from the U.S. men's national team to Colombia in what should have been a friendly leading up to the Copa America to show the world, how the best team in CONCACAF operates, uh, and we got fucking destroyed, my boys. We got destroyed. Henry, you called for two managers in the space of, like, five hours on Twitter. Like, that's, that's a rough day. 
I'm out here just like day. firing. I actually had like a horrible day of of watching <laughs> footy. Like, so we we had the TST, which dueling for weekend or dueling for Lincoln. Shout out Griff and Billy one time. They Huge lost their game that day. Time. They lost their game, and then the U.S. got just bombed. And then St. Louis was horrible. I just like, oh, and then the whatever we watched, the Oilers lost or whatever it was. So I'm like, this sucks. Everything's terrible. It's all terrible. But um, what do we make of Burhalter uh, and 5 1? Is this giving us like a precursor to the Copa America? I'm I am scared for Brazil. Definitely yeah. scared for Brazil. Yeah, Brazil's on Wednesday. We're going to get smacked. I didn't, uh, I didn't hate our lineup. I didn't hate our lineup at all, but I, I feel like. I feel like once we once we subbed off Reem and Geo, I know it like started bad and just continued to get worse and worse <laughs> as the game went on. But once once Burhalter subbed off Geo and Reem, it went from like a game that we need to you know prioritize ahead of you know the Copa America, especially ahead of the last friendly against Brazil that you know we all knew wasn't going to go well. Anyways, I think Hoof said it. Hammer the over if you're listening. Um, bang it. But it went. It went from being like a game that we need to take seriously to like just a friendly. As soon as he yeah, subbed those get us guys off, off the like, field, like it yeah, was, it was not it, good. Yeah, it was also a home game for Columbia and Ohio, which was wild to me. Crazy. It it, it, it remind it reminded me a lot of uh of the game that we the friendly that we had against uh that city had at home. Who do we play? That team. Uh, oh, no, 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 Club America. Club America. Uh, that, in that, the that was, that was whatever it was. That was like a yeah. home, that was like a home game for them. It felt very yeah, it similar, yellow. even though I wasn't at that one. It felt very similar to to that kind of game. Dude, one one Dead Bull advocate spec I'll throw out, and I I'm not Don't the guy. I'm not this. the guy. I'm not the guy to defend Greg Berhalter. I'm not. Say Berhalter in. Say it right now. Say I'm not it. Saying, oh God, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I watched this presser. And, you know, obviously there's flaws in everything that this guy ever says when it comes to football. And his just general knowledge of it is, I want BJ back. BJ ball was great. It was fucking vibes. Vibes were Go let the boys boys ball. Uh, But the goals that I saw, I watched the entire game. I saw the highlights. There were a lot of goals late. And a lot of them were stupid mental error mistakes. Like, they were... Horrible transition turnovers to where the wingbacks were up the field. And Greg pointed this out and he was like, the guys didn't respect the game today. The guys didn't respect the, the you know, the opponent. They made a lot of, you know, individual mistakes that led to goals. And they did. Like, there really were a bunch of moments that I could pinpoint on the, on the highlights that were like, oh, someone just coughed it up, you know, 10 yards behind our own half. And Columbia's in. Like, oh, shit, here's Luis Diaz. <laughs> Let's just, Ballin. you know. Let's just leave him the ball to go at our back line. Like, there, there were a bunch of situations where I felt guys were to blame. Like, mm. and, and that's a setup thing. We can always talk about the setup, and, and Berhalter's a total idiot. But this one specifically, it was like, they shit their pants when, when they had to face some real opposition. Which is why we do this. Like, this is what yeah. we're supposed to be doing to build up for, you know, the Copa. We're going to get, if we show up like that, brother, we're going to get swept off the park. This, this to me was just the, the epitome of like what the international game is. Like if you look at the possession stats, I think I'm pretty sure it was like close to 50-50. But at the end of the day, like an international game, you just need your best players to be your play- best players and step up and have quality. And like that's what Colombia did. James turned back the clock. Luis Diaz against Joe Scali was just on skates. And I actually like Joe Scali. I do think he had a little bit of the rough of it. But I think so much of this, if you kind of go position by position with Colombia and the United States, at least that lineup, like, Yes, I know Cardoso was in there and Tyler Adams and Musa weren't in, but like Cardoso's 22, playing, I think he's playing in Spain, I believe. Yeah, that is. It's like, if you go position by position, like, a lot of the guys, like, we're talking about Robbo being potentially left back in the uh, player of the season, or left back of the season in the prime. Like, Tim Reed been quality forever. Like, we've been so high on Chris Richards all year. So, like, I, I kind of agree with you, Hoove, in terms of, yes, this is one of those games where it's, it's, a, it's a setup game, and we did make some mistakes, but at the same time, like, Greg's got a week with these guys. Like, you, you, he has a week. And within that week in the international game, you come up with a game plan for Colombia, and you come up with a game plan for Brazil, and you put the players in the right position to execute. Mm-hmm. And so maybe this is some little bit on the players. Maybe they weren't ready. But at the same time, it's not like we saw, like, a fluid system. It's not like we just missed a ton of chances. And I think that's the bigger issue leading into Brazil. What we do typically see from the national team is we will see a reaction just because – 
You know, everybody like they're not going to fire Greg before this tournament. Like they're they're embarrassed of what happened. So maybe they have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate it. But let them let them let them let them coach yeah. themselves. BJ you know, Ball. BJ Ball God. for the Copa America would be so lit. But yeah, it doesn't get easier with Vinicius running at you um, on Wednesday. <laughs> it, Vinicius and Rodrigo and all those guys. Endrick's going to come on in the 90th minute and score seven goals. It's yeah. it's really just this like Again, incredible over, thing that's going to keep coming. Over. Yeah, I think yeah, we're in a it, tough spot. I'll be honest with the U.S. I think we're like. And this is basically for all the um, confederations that are not South America and Europe, is that um, when you're a good nation, you're expected to dominate the ball possession in your confederation. No question. Yeah. Like, if we give up 50% possession to Trinidad and Tobago, I will lose my mind. Like, <laughs> I'll fly and I'll make sure Berhalter does get on the plane. <laughs> but then when you play against, like, you play against a South America team, you play against a European team, that's probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So you almost have to like, you have to treat it like two different ways, and that's got to be so difficult. I mean, we see it with like the Asian teams, even when when they play in not the Asian games, but like you know in the World Cup, like South Korea will have eighty percent of the possession, and then they're going to come like, all right, we're going to be smash and grab, we're going to go thirty two percent and hope, because it's just like you you don't have the quality level. So I I do sympathize with Berhalter on that one point and that one point only. Because um, we broke up with our girlfriend, and then things were not going well, so we thought, let's bring her back. <laughs> and it's a terrible idea. It doesn't always work. Is. It's never worked in history. And it's not going to work this summer. Like, I just, I don't get it. We have a weak, we have a weak spine to this team. We don't, like, what's the center forward thing? We're, mm-hmm. we're going Balogun? Yeah. Like, okay, fine. But, like, Still what's his experience? It's Balogun very hadn't... minimal. Yeah. Great year. <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, like, right? And our center backs are, like, you should never have Tim Ream be the starting center back of your team. Like, most teams that have, like, an old center back, it's Giorgio Chiellini and Thiago Silva, who have played, like, eight gazillion games. Okay. Yeah. Tim yeah. Ream. You know, like, they're, yeah. they're different stratospheres. I like Tim Ream, but, like, that should he should not be the caliber we're at. And Chris Richards has had a very good Premier League season, but, again, like, there's just not a lot there. The midfield's great. Tyler Adams should not play at the Copa America. Should you not think so. Played 121 minutes this year, brother. He's yeah. such a different. Like he's just I that think guy. He's, though. I think he's the most differential player in our squad. I really do. But he's played 121 minutes. Like I yeah. don't know what. What is your expectations of that? This is I, how I feel about Luke Shaw with. At it for England, it's the exact same situation. They barely play; they're going to get thrown into this, and he may or may not be ready for ninety minutes. Yeah, it's sink or swim, and it's probably going to be sink. Yeah, he, okay. he shouldn't. I agree, and I do think that's the position that we actually have some depth in too. To the to the point of where we don't have to rely on him. Like Johnny Ball this year, like there's already conversations of him leaving Betis. We trust that kid, like. You can use Musa in, in the six. He's done it before. I guess he doesn't really love it, but that's fine. Wes, if it really comes down to it, Wes can drop deeper. Like, those are the positions that we actually have a little bit of coverage. I wholeheartedly agree. Not only is he going to be not up to speed, I can't watch that man get hurt again, brother. Like, yeah. he, he's one of those talents that yeah. we, we really, really need for the future of this team, especially in the World Cup. But, like, just let him fucking figure it out with his legs first. He does it's not, the hardest position on the field. He does yeah. not. Like we're need putting to be that guy. a guy that hasn't played at the hardest position on the field. You yeah. have yeah. to stop every attack, start every attack, and run like you cannot believe. And we're going to put a guy that hasn't played into the engine. And that's. You better believe, though. I see that man lining it. up. I'm going to be like fucking just. Ready, oh, yeah. You know? Don't get me wrong. I'll be just like <laughs> bald eagle tattooed yeah. on my chest to be going. <laughs> but at the same time, I just. I don't want to see it. As much as I want to see it, I don't want to see it. Hot take there. No Tyler Adams in the Copa America. Yeah, that's hot take. I like it. I'm in. Yeah. For the for the future of his career. Um, gentlemen, we're gonna wrap up tonight's episode with a Euro twenty twenty four prediction. Uh we have the Euros kicking off on Friday uh in Germany this year. There's a lot of great storylines going into this one, and there's a lot of guys with a lot of things to prove. 
Um, and uh, some last hurrahs for some absolute legends of this game. You have to think that this is the last uh, Euros for guys like Modric and Ronaldo and Cruz, um, several other legends of the game. Um, so I want to hear a couple of things from you all. Um, I have about four different categories. Um, I want to hear the dark horse of the tournament. What team do you think is going to have that Cinderella run like Morocco did in the World Cup? Um, who's your favorite to win the whole tournament? Who's going to be the flop of the tournament team-wise? And who do you think is going to be the player of the tournament? Uh, I'd like to start us off with our favorite. Who is your favorite to win the tournament this round? I, f I feel like it's got to be unanimous. Almost. France, 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 France is way too deep. They are. They're real deep. And and coming off of that World Cup performance, I know saying that you guys are probably all going to pick different teams now, but <laughs> I I can't in my sane mind currently pick anybody but France. I'm going to go France just because you said favorite. That's not who I actually. I mean, France is the favorite going in. I don't necessarily think that means they're shoe in to win. I just think they're not the favorite. Actually, they're not England's. England's, is England's uh, favorite? favorite. Yeah, really. Yeah. The the betting favorite is England. Yeah. yeah. Berhalter and Southgate, fucking boys. I'll tell you that. Berhalter's the great value Southgate. <laughs> Literally, yes, yes, yeah, yes. But, uh, truthfully, I, I, at least in my opinion, I think it's France, based off of what I've seen out of England the last two, the last two friendlies that they play. Like right now, for me, I think it has to be France. France. Just tied Canada though. Kyle Heber mm -hmm. shut hey, down and bought down. Yeah. My dog. We uh, played class together. Did you guys know that? <laughs> Heber, Missouri State. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Um, I'm going to go with Portugal. I'm going to put my yeah, hand uh, yeah. for Portugal. And here's the deal. I think I think the make or break is going to be Cristiano Ronaldo. I think a Ronaldo-less Portugal for the majority of the games goes the distance. I think a Portugal with Ronaldo as the star front man, I think they, they lose. They for sure make it out of the group, but I think they lose early. But a Ronaldo list Portugal or just as a substitute feature, I think they go all the way. Is he on that list? Yeah, man, that's that's, uh, that's good foreshadowing for one of my picks later. So thank you for whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Nikki, who do you wow. have? Who's yours? Um, I had France. Um, I think you guys probably saw that coming. Um, even I without just, Paul Pogba. I, even without <laughs> the man Paul Pogba, um, I think England was the only other per team that I was thinking. I agree with you though that Portugal will play better with. Out Ronaldo, so I completely agree with that statement. And if he continues to ride the bench, they will go further in the tournament. I also just don't see that happening. I think his ego is too big to where he's going to maybe make Demand a stand on the bench. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what we'll I, see. But I, I think it's France with England's uh, lack of defense this year. Um, I think France might be the favorite. This one. I'm also going Portugal, and I, I think Nicky, you made a good point there. That like he Ronaldo's going to find his way onto the pitch, but he was also dropped in the World Cup. So Correct. there's a world where we have seen it, and they were better than than when they were, you know, relying on him. At least now, obviously, we know the player he was, and it's just a different game that he's got out there in, in Saudi Arabia. So um, I've got Portugal just because I want to see them do better, partially, because I think that's electric. I think him winning one would be electric. I'm not going to lie. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. Not a Ronaldo guy, but that would be fun. Um, kind of had just France and Mbappe and pretty much everything that they've ever done. I mean, just, I don't even like the French, so uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, kind of. Um, Sorry, France, my bad. <laughs> Sorry if you're listening, France. I, think I apologize. I said something last week like Paris, gross, never gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> you just have this like personal uh, agenda, Michael. What about you? Who, who are your favorites to win this Euros? I'm going with Demonshaft. I'm going with the hosts. Really? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Say more. Why do you think Germany? Because I think they've got the player of the tournament in Jamal Musiala. He's going to make a serious difference. Ooh. I think he's going to bring it home. I really do. Wow. That's a good shout. Such a big mm -hmm. fan of him. I love that. Yeah. Dude, we, we, are, we are truthers on the podcast. Hey, Germany, the their, Germany's midfield three can be gross. Yeah. With, 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 with Kudo, with Wurtz, with Musiala. Like, they can... Yeah. Cruise. They've got, they've got cruise some, in there. some yeah. of the faster yeah. players in the Euros, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're strikers. Donne, yeah, and Fool Krug is going to, yeah, tours for days. He's just going to do his thing. He's doing his thing. 
Yeah. Just doing his thing. Okay, he's so a German you... Jamie Vardy in a totally different frame of mind. He's like a 32 year old. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? He's just going to bag goals. Okay, so we have a mixed bag of of who we think are going to win this tournament. Let's go on the opposite end of the spectrum. Who is going to be the flop of the tournament? It's not going to be wrong, lads. Do we have to be wrong? It is not going to be wrong. I did not put England. Oh. Portugal. Portugal. Say, wow. well, give, give us your thoughts. Portugal, on Portugal is not winning the group. That's my take. Portugal is my favorite squad in the entire tournament, and I do not think they're winning the group. Okay, so Portugal's wow. group. Let me find it real quick. Turkey, Georgia, Georgia, Turkey. Yeah, Georgia, and... Turkey in Czechia. Is that Czech? Like the Czech yep. Republic? Is Czech my boys. The official name That's of my, it now? My dark horse, the Czechs. Interesting. Wow. See, I I have Turkey as my dark horse, who are also in the same I, group. I so. got sucked into that Turkey, you know, vibe at the World Cup and at the previous Euros, and I'm I'm done with the Turks. Yeah, they're, they're I, dead I, to me. Yeah, I remember dead to me. my dark horse. Yeah, yeah. dead to me. Arda Guler. I'm, like the, I'm like this the Kentucky of my March Madness. They're dead to me <laughs> forever. That's the Turks. <laughs> um, they're out. Okay, so you think so. Portugal is going to not win their group, but do you think, think they're the going to advance? Do you, think gonna, yeah. do you think that they're going to advance? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that is that a Ronaldo thing? Like, is that what like your your base point being partially? That? Yeah, Ronaldo definitely makes them worse. And there's no, I don't think anyone can yeah. debate that. But also, he could also just score like a. 30 inch vertical header in the 98th minute. And yeah, because he's a freak. He's mm-hmm. a freak. He's like Captain America, but created for, to play soccer. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I, I, I think the Czechs are solid, and I, yeah, something about the Portuguese, like that roster and that squad, have been so good for a while now, and it's just something is missing there. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's what we're going with. Patrick Sheik, a little uh, Thomas Suchek. They yeah. are solid, dude. That team was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's me. The checks. Okay, dark horse Nikki. Who do you have? Um, I. It's interesting because I don't even really know if they're considered a dark horse because they're the defending champs. But I feel like not that many people are talking about Italy. Um, and I think that they have a possibility to um, go right back and go back to back. They're so young across the board. They're so young, and it's a bunch of guys who just like. I guess they're good in the Italian league, but like they they're just not the superstars. You have Nico Barea, who's unbelievable, but like other than that, I, I even think that attack is bad. That what attack is bad. Yeah, it yeah. Is, there's it's like dreadful. it's like it's like whoa for Italy, like a major top yeah. five country in the world. Like that's shockingly American looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who's <laughs> missing from good. that team that the, that won though? Like. What what are the major names that that aren't on the squad that were the back a couple years ago? Well, yeah, I mean, like their their defense number one. Uh, well, the old is ben- gone. Benucci, yeah. Chiellini. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't, I it just when I looked at the roster, I just like wasn't like overly convinced yeah. by a lot. But equally so, Nick, if you're right on this and and they're they're like they make a deep run. That's a lot of guys with a pretty high transfer value that'll come out of this tournament. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. You know, during the World Cup, uh, what was it, two years ago, about halfway through the World, the Cup, World we Cup, we took predictions on this podcast of who's going to be the guy that like makes a major like transfer move after the World Cup. This could be like your Italians, Nick. If if they go well, a bunch of these guys could get picked up by bigger teams. A lot of young talent there. Yep. Winks. What about it's you, buddy? Stamaka, you trust. Yeah, bro. Tatted legend. West Ham forever. Mm-hmm. I uh, I have Serbia as mine, and I think I picked them as my dark horse uh-huh. in the World Cup as well. Um, but I, I still think they're so strong. I think that if if they can make it out of their group, if they can make it past you know Denmark and England, or at least one of them, um, I don't think they're very good at the back compared to a lot of other teams in the tournament, but their attack of um, Tadic, Vlahovic, Mitrovic, Ooh. Malinkovic, yeah, Savage, Mitro. like yeah. these guys are dogs, yeah. Um, and they're and they're big up front too. Like if they play with two at the front, I those, those Eastern Bloc countries play different. Yeah, they, they get Brazil football. hell in the World Cup. I do remember yeah. that until Richie decided to actually be a Brazilian for once and you know score a bike. But you know, I digress. <laughs> Neither here nor <laughs> there it is. Uh, last but not least, player of the tournament. Wait, we have. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you not say yours. Say yours. No, I didn't say mine. Uh, you, you, you did not. Oh yeah, fuck! Wow, wow. Uh, Someone else 
let's take over hosting duties. I'm out. <laughs> I got it, guys. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> Michael? <laughs> I, uh, I, I've thought more about this. I'd made my pick earlier today, and I've thought a lot more about it since, especially considering that they played today. But I still really like the Netherlands, and I partially only like them because of how good their back line is. I think Ronald Koeman's an idiot, and they're mildly toothless up front. But you can do a lot with a really good back line. Like this is this is this is tournament football. We are we are playing one and done matches, and if you keep it nil nil, you know, until the 80th, you're leaving yourself a lot mm-hmm. of opportunities to leave with points and and win games. So. I think defensively they're so slick, and this is all completely biased for my love of Mickey Van de Ven, who's going to be an absolute, absolute star in this tournament. Um, but, yeah, you know, if their coach doesn't blow it and they score a couple goals, I, I think they make a good run. Don't forget about the Frankie. Horse double against, yeah, Frankie, bro. Oh, Frankie. Oh, Frankie. That breaks my heart, absolutely. But Van Horse scored a double against Argentina in the World Cup, so that could happen. Yeah, I'm devastated making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a week to sit at home this summer. <laughs> uh, Dubs, who who is your dark horse? I'm going. This this is. I mean, not biased, but it is biased. Um, they did top their their European qualifying group. I'm going Denmark, fellas. Um, just, I, I, I am. I'm going Denmark. I watched in the last two games, and I, I get it. Norway's not great, but they did look fantastic. They did have a fairly easy. Um, they did have a fairly easy qualifying group, just in terms. Of, I think it was like Northern Ireland and a couple of those other countries. But truthfully, like I think, I think they can get out of the group. Like I think they can honestly play England tough as well. Like I picked England to be my flop of the tournament, strictly because I think yes, England has a ton of quality, but at the same time, they're lacking a bit of experience. All of their wingers they have, except for maybe Anthony Gordon, aren't two-way wingers. Foden can do it if he's asked to, but at the same time, can Southgate get that out of them? Um, so I really think Denmark, I think Denmark's going to get out of the group. I know Serbia's good. I know England's in there as well, but I think they're my dark horse. I think that's the group to watch, to be honest with you. I think that there's yeah. going to be some huge games in that group. Um, so now, if I have the group's permission, I'd like to go to the player of the tournament. Is that okay with the group? Can permission granted. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, player of the tournament, Andy Hoover. Start us off. Wrong guy. Somebody else. I'm is on okay. the spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we already got Michaels. We got Jamal Musiala. Jamal Musiala. That's a great pick. That's regardless if if he actually is the player of the tournament. I can't wait to watch him. He's going to yeah. be electric. He's going to be great. Agreed. Can't wait to watch it. Him and Verts are such a fun like two yes. year old like. Yes. They're the same age as AC Jackson, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's levels to this game. You know I'm saying? Love to know yeah. that. There's mm-hmm. levels. Maybe I could be your next graph on one of your articles. Verse compared to AZ Age. Yeah. No, oh just... God, I don't know if you want that. <laughs> yeah. Just the circle graph or whatever it is. Yeah. I did uh, a uh, Ricky Puig and Blom comparison, and that was fun. Awesome. If we, if that midfield duo would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that would be unbelievable. They're yeah. one um, midfielder. <laughs> Yeah. Who, who wants to go? Who's the player of the tournament? I was going to say, um, since I picked France as who I think is probably going to win it, I'm going to go with Griezmann as the player of the tournament. I know that's oh, a so shock. Shock besides not Mbappe, um, but I think he's been playing well of late. Um, that's a big shout to Butchie, who's been watching him pretty closely. But I think he's going to be pulling the strings for them, um, and I think he's going to have a great tournament. $15 million release clause. St. Louis City loots. Listen up. That'd be great. Hey, I <laughs> rented an Enterprise rental car this weekend, so the budget's going up, boys. We're going way up. Let's go. Only way is up. Uh, Winks, what do you got? I, th- I I made this pick only assuming England don't flop, but I think Phil Foden is going to have a crazy God, That'd be a tournament. meteoric year for him. That'd be that'd That's be what massive. I'm saying. I just, I can like, I feel it in my plums, you know? <laughs> might be testicular Gates Gates event. Event. You might want to get that checked hey, out. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, but assume, assuming, if not, it's, I can't see it not being Mbappe, which I, I'm already yeah. annoyed. I'd be so annoyed about. by. It'd be the worst. Who, are you ready for your pick yet? I, I can throw one out. Uh, sure. In, in a similar fashion to Mr. Winks, if England doesn't boil it. Still talking about probably the best striker in the world, Harry Kane. Harry Kane. <laughs> he's literally going to be the only reason. The, he, of course it was. Of course it was. He's going to be the only reason, they, only reason they do anything. He's going to take the pens. He's going to score almost all of them. And <laughs> he is going to back a couple more cheapies. And, you know, 
The only reason he's good is because he puts himself in the best positions ever and gets tap ends. Uh, it's not true at all. He's a world-class striker. But um, if they do it at all, it's going to be him. There's Love no that. way around it. Love it. Sindoverson? Anyone have any guesses who mine is? We might have the same. I know exactly who it is. It's not going to be him. It's Chalk. Bruno. Bruno. It's Chalk. Chalk. Bruno Fernandes. Same yeah. problem. My yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that round. Oh, on the streets. Play, thank play you. the tournament. Oh. Make you so much close to like, oh, I'm never coming back rat. on this. <laughs> rat. Rat. Over, rat. Over, over 50 goals and uh, over 50 goals and assists this season for club and country. Um, he always finds a way to score. And truthfully, I do think if Portugal goes far, I think he's going to be at the heart of it. Um, mm. he, he, cre- he creates everything. But John Neves sitting behind him, they seem to sort of have formed that partnership. Um, we'll see Bernardo Silva sign that role as well. But truthfully, I think that's one of those where, just like everybody, if Bruno steps up, I think Portugal is going to be fantastic. And if those key players don't step up, I think they're going to flop. But um, I, I do think Portugal is going to go deep in the tournament. And they're sort of the, like because of that, I do think he'll probably be their best player. And I chose Bruno as well, which was surprising oh. even to me because I'm not Bruno's really biggest corner. fan. Like, I, I, I'm i not, but I do think for the same reasons, I, I think he's getting a little bit more mature, not playing as much hero ball. It's still in him for sure, but I, I think that, yeah, just like you said, Dobes, I think they're going to make a deep run. They're my favorite to win the tournament for me, and I think it's going to be because of Bruno. Um, you think Ronaldo's not on the field. He takes every dead ball. He takes every penalty. He takes every every big moment is going to come down to him. So I think he's going to be my player of the tournament. Exciting shit, fellas. Exciting shit. I don't know. Um, well, listen, uh, Euro start on Friday. Um, if you've listened this far, I want to say thank you. Uh, Michael, shout out to you, big dog. Your podcast yeah. debut was fantastic. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks You're for having us. It's been fun. You were, of course. You were talked about or mentioned in our in our group chat every single week. Every week. <laughs> every week. Yeah, because yeah, we got a question. That, yeah, uh, that gift that. from last week to, like, babe, wake up. Taxes with Michael. Just mm-hmm. that's good. <laughs> literally, yeah. that, that's a, that is a that real message, though, in our group chat. That's, that's a funny. real message. Yeah, uh, yes, good. listeners, I um, want to invite you to uh, follow us on all socials. Um, that is the TikTok, that's the Twitter, that's the Instagram. Make sure you check out Tactics with Michael on Twitter at Chat City Tactics, and don't forget to shop Manscaped and use code Mecca twenty for twenty percent off and free shipping worldwide. And until next week, we'll see you later. Cheers, fellas. Yeah, good boy. Cheers. See you guys. Peace. Thanks.